when I posted the uh, marketing for this piece. And I think one of the topics uh, that was around uh, playing the game, playing the, the corporate game. Right. And I had so many people DM me or direct message me saying, Ooh, that's going to be good. Right. But it actually comes from with in my coaching practice in my leadership development practice, I work with clients, uh, black clients who uh, say, you know, I feel like I have to play the game. I have to play the game. So I kept hearing that theme. Mm -hmm. And so I thought it would be good for us to talk about exactly what does that mean? Playing, right. playing the game. So with that said, um, so many of us talk about playing the game in corporate America, but to me, what that really means um, is that, you know, teaching yourself to anticipate those situations, you know, and, and how to think beyond the job description. But playing the game has changed so much to where now people think it means appeasing to uh, white majority comfort. Right. Yeah. OK, yeah. so and, and, and then I saw a, a meme or a gif that said that's not playing the game, y'all. It says that's playing yourself. Mm. I was like, <laughs> yeah, and I was like, OK, so definitely want to talk about that a little bit in right. in your experience, in your 15 years. What, playing 20, the game. Oh, what 15 in D&I? Yeah, 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Playing the game. What does that mean for you? And and with it being Black History Month. <laughs> I think this is a, a perfect time to educate all of us, give us a different mindset, a different perspective on some of the topics that we're going to that we're going to speak about. Right. So playing the game, Tanya. Yeah. You went into diversity and inclusion when you stepped into the corporate world. What did playing the game mean for you? OK. And did that change? Did the definition change for you? Yes. So, you know, a lot of people don't. They, they've seen the outcome. So I'm probably about to be more transparent than I would really want to be. <laughs> I'm about to be really transparent. So um, when I entered um, into the corporate world, I had finished grad school with no job offer, like the majority of my classmates. Um, and I went back home <laughs> and said, OK, what are we going to do? <laughs> right. And so I headed to Charlotte and, and, and joined um, the financial services firm there. And that was the Green Mountain. <laughs> And um, started as a contractor. So for me, when my when I entered into corporate from that perspective, having a master's but not having a, a job like most of my like the majority of my classmates mm -hmm. with a tax bonus, all that great stuff, um, I went in on survival mode just on general principle. Right. I needed to get permanent because I had a daughter. And I need to get some benefits. Mm -hmm. So I think going in for me, I wasn't necessarily thinking about it as playing the game per se. And it didn't register to me for that. Mm -hmm. What registered for me was I needed to move and be strategic about where I headed so that I could get the best opportunity for me and my daughter. That's what my goal was when I first entered. And so I think that helped me not to have that play the game mentality, so to speak. Right. And we have to be careful with our words because mm -hmm. that meme is right on. You play mm -hmm. a game, you can play yourself because the only way you play yourself is when you play a game. But right. if you are being strategic and planning strategy and planning what are your moves based on your objectives and your goals, that's a different mindset. And that becomes a chess, I hate to say chess game, it becomes a chess game mm -hmm. <laughs> or a strategy, so to speak, versus do I need to assimilate so that I can be, you know, be successful and move up this ladder. Yes. So when I entered, I think because my mindset was on survival, not in the sense of getting to the top because I need to, I was surviving because I was a single mom needing to figure out how I'm going to take care right. of <laughs> right. No, absolutely. And so, so now, you know, you see leadership now has made playing the game and I'm putting air quotes playing the game and in the corporate, the corporate game with the goal to form alliances mm -hmm. and gain power. So now here we are, um, you know, with diversity, equity, inclusion, now forefront, it's right in our faces, especially in, in the workplace. Right. 
So now when you hear black individuals saying, you know, I'm not playing that game. I'm not playing the game. And I go, well, wait a second, because you said something just a, a few seconds ago, being strategic. Yeah. So now as D and I, it's always been important to us, but now that it seems like it's like top of the list for a lot of um, corporations. It is. You know, how can, how can we help the black community understand what playing the game means in the corporate world? And that it's, it's not always us against them when we use that term playing the game. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think I know what you're saying. And if I veer off you, you keep me honest. No, no, no. Go for it. Um, I think what 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 is key, the end game has got to be in front of you. Right. And I think as you decide, it, it really truly starts with self. So I was thinking about this when we were getting ready to have this conversation. At the end of the day, it really has to start with self. Right. And what is the end game? And if your end game is around legacy, building wealth, leaving something mm -hmm. behind, helping the disenfranchised, helping those who are less, you know, are marginalized then there is there is something that you have to do differently if you plan to do that within the corporate world right. or, or, or public sector or government job it you know wherever you're going to work in an entity that you don't own yourself mm -hmm. um there is there are you know rules that make you make it where you need to be strategic about what you want to do and so if the end game is not in front of you then yes you will be feeling like you're playing a game Mm -hmm. The other part of that, I think it is, is that we really have to not just start with stuff and take it back to self, but look at our ancestors beyond the enslavement. Right. And I think that's where we get caught up. Uh, we had the opportunity to witness the Black Church special on PBS. Yes. Just recently for two, yes. for two nights. And, um, and, and just looking at that transition and, and, and the movement and the migration up you know, nor for, for those in the South and, and just the, even the infighting and the different things that went on from a church perspective. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people say, well, we're trying to assimilate or you're trying to dress white because you dress up. Let's take it back to royalty. Let's look at our African ancestors and how they dressed, the kings and the queens. Yeah. That Absolutely. wasn't, <laughs> that was, you know, that was, that was high um, confidence and presentation of who they were as mathematicians and brilliant, you know, um, scientists and, and, and brilliant men and women tribes that just discovered mm -hmm. so much of what we, you know, experience today. So when you bring it in the context of the U.S. and um, and then you realize if you really get start with self, like we said, then for you, it doesn't become so much of you're playing a game or you're assimilating, but you're actually stepping into who you are as an African, Af African, African American, or someone from the diaspora. And yeah. we, that's how we have to start thinking about it. Then once you put that in your mindset, then you truly become, as some of the people I see putting in the chat, you mm -hmm. truly think about the end game because yes. you become strategic. Um, now, it doesn't mean that the corporate world doesn't come with its own set of rules, which, yes, we lag behind in understanding what those mm -hmm. rules are, what those politics are. Yes. You know, that's one of the things in working in the early talent space that we have to talk to our HBCUs about. It's not about trying to get kids to assimilate. It's just being able to make sure we set them up for success yes. and understand what certain things mean in, in the corporate vernacular. Um, but as, as, as far as, as how do we not how do we not play ourselves like that means say we mm -hmm. know what the end game for us is for and us. As, as individuals and as a people and what we're striving for and then how can we strategically make those moves to get there through entrepreneurship through corporate jobs through government jobs all of it has to come together it's yes. not one or the other and, and you made a good you made a good point um about going back to, to colleges, HBCUs, mm -hmm. and, and even PWIs and, and, and teaching our black brothers and sisters, our black community about, you know, playing the game. What does that truly mean? The politics, mm -hmm. you know, or as you said, the corporate rules, mm -hmm. understanding the corporate rules, because I know when I went into, I stepped into the corporate world. Whoa. It, I, uh, I can't even, I can't even go with a word. It was baffling 
to me and some of the behavior and some of the strategic moves that my Caucasian Mm -hmm. sisters and brothers were making. And I felt like, like you said, I felt like I was two steps behind at times because I didn't understand how I didn't understand how to do that. So yeah, like Kia said, it's like playing chess. It is. <laughs> and, and, and anticipating and playing chess is anticipating the other person's move. Yeah. So.